Have you tried the newfangled teen filter that makes you look like a teenager? No. No? It's fun. I don't understand people who I see a lot of people on TikTok using the thing. Uh-huh. And they're getting really emotional seeing themselves as teenagers. Okay. I don't understand. I loved it. It was cool to see myself as a teenager again, but like I wouldn't you couldn't pay me to be fifteen again. <laughs> Would you want to be fifteen again? No. There you go. I think I think it's more m people want to look 15 again. I don't. I, mu I much prefer looking how I look now than I did when I was 15. Are you Ugh, kidding me? Boy, you must have been really ugly. Just Hey, welcome back to our stupid directs. This is Corbin. I'm Rick. You can follow us on Instagram, Twitter for more juicy content. Thanks to our Patreon, follow us to the account, subscribe to the like button. Truly, I didn't. I. I you know how long I've waited to we get it. Look You're mature. hideous. And I, I, I've liked how I've looked every stage of my life. I, you are what you are when you are it then and there and the now. Be thankful for the now, everybody. Good grief. Um, <sighs> so this is a speech by R. Madhavan. Yes. Obviously, we've seen a few of his films. Uh, but the, the title is like learning English, but that's that's title of the channel it's not, okay it's not i think it's just uh it's learning channel. english the channel with yeah this is a speech he gave and i think they just it's them as if we would say osr with blah 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 yeah right oh. but i think like um they sub it so people that don't know english maybe sure can help learn english sure but it's not the speech is not about him learning english um <coughs> thanks for the clarification <laughs> Little dabba do you. God bless you. Sorry, my allergies are going crazy right now. I guess I shouldn't have played soccer. Yeah, he's running around outside in the grass. Snort and coke in between his kicks. It's beginning of spring, almost, and lots of pollen going around. Yep. But this says... It's an Indian actor, writer, film director who produces predominantly appears in Tamil and Hindi language films. Yes. He has won Filmfare Awards, <laughs> South, and... Three Tamil Nadu State Film Awards. So we are doing the I'm not having life changing speech. How badly do you want? Anyways, not the other one. Is are in your uh, you know at the threshold of the dreams that you want to achieve. Please sit down. It's going to be slightly longer. And you know you guys are going to actually determine how the environment around you is going to progress along with you. You must know that at no point in your life is something impossible. At no point. You could be in a place, you could be born and brought up in a place like Bihar, like I have done, and uh, be a beginner star to come and talk to people in Coimbatore as a star. Or you could be in the industry like the Tamil and Telugu industry and be known as the most exciting director. Raj Bauli suddenly decides that he can make a film which is, if not better, but at par with Hollywood. And he does that staying in India. And he hits the ball right out of the park. He becomes a historic in just that one moment. There is a huge lesson to be learned on things like that. Everybody keeps saying success is, uh, and, uh, is when, you, when the right opportunity meets the right preparation, right? So you can't have the right preparation by being the engineer that you want to be and you keep looking out for that right opportunity. But what makes the right opportunity and the right preparation come together? When does that synergy happen for you to be prepared for it? Because um, like they say, if you're prepared but you don't get the opportunity, it's useless. If you have the opportunity, you're not prepared, it's not useless. But they have to meet at a point, right? And that meeting happens because you will it to happen because you want it so badly to happen. I could be walking down any street, I could be anybody, but why did that one director come and meet me and wanted me to act in that television serial? If you look at every next step in my career, I have never prepared for it. I have never imagined that this could happen. I never imagined that Mani Ratnam will call me. How would Mani Ratnam know about a guy who's doing a television series in Bombay without even seeing one episode of mine? So let's come back to that one point that happens, the synergy that happens between the right opportunity and the right preparation. And that happens 
when you have what is called situational awareness. So let me tell you a little bit about situational awareness. Situational awareness is when, in the, as in the army, they say you're completely aware of what is happening around you at all times. Correct. So, uh, as I was saying, the situational awareness happens when you're completely aware of everything that's going around you at all times. And you should be able to do that. When we are in the army, and if you're walking down the ground, parade ground, anybody who's involved with the defense will know what I'm saying is the truth. And if there's an officer walking away from the other side of the ground, you have to stop and salute him and say, Ram Ram Sarji, or whatever is the a call of the unit. If you don't, they'll give you a brick in your hand and you have to shave with that brick. Oh, jeez. So, thank you, that's awesome. So, uh, what, uh, Ow. the situation Ow. Is, is because you should know when the enemy is around you or when there is danger around you. You know how that is taught to you from when you're a child? That's taught to you in the form of good manners, in the form of being courteous. Hmm. So when, when you say a good morning, or you're saying a good afternoon, or you're looking around and helping a teacher who's carrying a book and being aware that she needs help, or you're w watching around and stepping over a drain and not tripping on yourself, you should know that you're fairly evolved in the form of, in the art of situational awareness. That's why people insist on teaching children good manners. And anybody who has good manners, not it's not just a desire, it's not a desire just to be considered to be a polite guy, but the ability to know when somebody needs to be wished, somebody needs help, somebody is in need of assistance, or somebody has to run away. And that's, that's why you teach your child good manners. And I will tell you today, from the bottom of my heart, I might not be completely uh, 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 worthy of some of the opportunities that I got, but I grabbed it like hell. And I got those opportunities simply because I was a very well-mannered person. I was able to, yeah, so, and with that manner, with the way you walk, with your gait, the kind of words that you use, it's very common to use normal language when you're friends and everything, but most people don't even have a vocabulary. The reason I started those classes in, uh, in Kolhapur was so that I had my friends who came to me and said, Maddie, we are very good engineers, buddy. We, we're really good at what we're doing. But the problem is I can't speak in English. I can't speak in Marathi. So when they come from Tatas and Kirloskas for campus selections, I'm not able to communicate to them. They don't even observe a Kolhapuri boy wearing a terry cotton pant and a shirt and wearing chappas and don't even consider that he's a good, he could be a good engineer. So when I said the fault lies with you guys. He says, you have to break the clutter. Nobody's going to come and say, hey, you know what? Maybe you're a good engineer. Let me give you a shot. You have to be noticed in that very first instant. And for two reasons. One is that either you should know what is your good, what is a good profession for you. If you're not able to make an impression, then quickly change it. This is not the be all and end all. The engineering or, or whichever subject that you choose to major in when you're in, in, in college does not literally have to be your lifelong profession. But give it a shot. At least know if that is a profession that you really want to pursue and excel in because that's the only way you'll survive is if you excel in it. If you excel in it to such an extent that you think, sleep, dream, eat, breathe that particular job. And I do that with acting. And I'm telling you, I do not know what else. I would have been a really bad soldier because I would have... Because I think I'm a really good actor. I, I'm involved completely, 100% of the time. I'm doing research. If I have free time, I'm going to YouTube and finding out what is a different method of acting. I'm, I just do that with a passion. If you're not doing that for your profession, know that you're in a secondary profession. Know that you're doing something which is not which the Lord has not made you to to achieve glory in. So you have to give it that shot. Now, what I, what I'm trying to tell you is that. Kolhapuri uh, friends of mine who then came to me and I said, okay, let's try and see if we can change that. So at five o'clock in the morning, they would come to my room, we'll go to the terrace and I started teaching them how to present themselves in the interview. Things that I had the good fortune of doing because I had many interviews and uh, uh, many uh, uh, group discussions uh, to attend. And then I started with basic things on how, how to shake hands, how to look somebody in the eye and speak. How do you introduce yourself? How do you shake hands with a lady as opposed to a man? How do you speak on a phone? What is dining table etiquette? What's telephone etiquette? What's, when do you use a shrimp fork or a salad fork? or a People might think, I might don't require that. I'm never going to work on those things. I'm doing my father's business. But you never know. That is the prepare, that is the preparation that you make to make that quantum leap in your careers.
these are basic things you have to know that you have to know how to dress correctly you have to know if you have body odor you have to know whether you're spitting on people's face and how to stop it when you're speaking if you don't do these things ladies and gentlemen you will be in an average life doing an average job and living an average life having said that i'm not saying that is wrong that could be your calling my father is very happy living that sort of a life because they don't live in extremes but if you have a passion and if you have a desire to be exceptional if you have a desire to be seen apart from the crowd then this is the bare minimum thing you should do so when these guys went for the interview the next time in kolhapur i made it a point to call the tatas and say hey you know what what is wrong because i am from a, from jamshedpur from a, the tata steel town i knew the officers i knew the senior gentlemen i said sir you know these friends of mine are extraordinary engineers the mere reason why you're not taking them is because they don't know how to present themselves in english how long is it going to take for you to some send somebody who knows marathi in your in your panel so that they can actually judge and see these guys are good enough for tata steel do you need good people who speak in english or do you need somebody who are good engineers and he agreed he actually sent people from maharashtra and for the first time in the history of kolhapur we had five guys getting into tata steel and kerlo steel and and i just wanted to say that i don't i'm not taking credit for it it is just i just felt bad because it is just a small three day push that they required to achieve that so when they were interviewed they said four years of learning engineering one side and those three days with madi we became engineers and successful today because of those three days and what i am teaching you is nothing extraordinary it is simple stuff it's the norm this is the way of the world so yes we are all radicals here i mean you guys are very awesome students you're sitting there quietly listening to me we used to make a ruckus if somebody came to give a speech but the idea is that you have to connect to the audiences that you're speaking to public speaking and group discussion skills can be taught in 15 minutes i used to challenge my students that i should i should say i will hold each and every one of your attention for 15 minutes because i will say such relevant stuff that you will be forced to pay attention to me and that's how you make an impression that's how you break the clutter that's how you get seen in this world and that's how you can achieve glory for yourself and this wonderful nation that you're part of hmm. so does he i'm guessing this is one of his things yeah. he says he teaches i guess so which is such a unique now you don't want to say just to india but obviously to um uh, in but in india it is a very big thing of that's why a lot of them speak multiple languages mm-hmm. english being obviously i think it's the second largest english speaking nation in the world yeah. after behind america yeah obviously uh and it's so different cuz here we are not required they you do take other languages but it's not like a thing of like you're it's high school kids middle school kids you're like oh yeah you take spanish and everybody and then knows forget it azul and um mi tu corazón fue a por ti and yeah. <laughs> donde está su madre yeah, yeah, yeah. uh and stuff like that but it's not like a if you don't learn this right you're not going to get a job right no I it mean, is it's <clears throat> always considered for the most part elective and that's obviously very different yeah and that's a a, a privilege we have. uh that's a that's a privilege obviously we have here in America that the entire world currently wants to learn english so they can get american or english yeah, so jobs in, the, in in the west i or, believe it is the most widely spoken international language so to communicate with <clears throat> the most affluent and successful people on an international basis you typically have to have your mother tongue and english and in america just like in great britain our mother tongue is english and granted it could also be just because we were also refused basically as a as a as a well, country yeah, as a whole to learn other languages you're going to have to learn ours yeah it's not our view i'm just no. saying like as a as a whole we were i was raised with parents who it was because it wasn't necessary here they didn't consider it to be something it would be cool if you learned another language and enrich your life it was not necessary for you to achieve the things you want to achieve in life yeah there are people here that straight up they'll ridicule other people and they don't even call it english they'll say hey you need to speak american which we want those people to go to texas and create their own country and leave the union yeah. uh but um yeah and there was only one thing i made a little look at the camera at the time i've i've never i don't agree with if you believe it you can do it 
that, I don't, I, that's not true. So if it's plausible, then absolutely. If you have a dream that can be achieved, but all things are saying it can't, keep believing in it. But I mean, I had a dream to be a major league baseball player when I was a kid, and there was a point where I very healthily buried the dream because it needed to die and go away. I'm about to turn 54. If I was still trying to play Major League Baseball because I believe all things are possible, I'd be an idiot. No, I think he's mostly talking about in that aspect. And he even said well, it. He at, did, he he did s- later on. He even said at a moment, he's like, obviously, if, if you can't do it, then obviously find something Absolutely. else that you can do. No, but there are there that message gets just blanketed out there in the same way that, for example, you know, love is love. I understand the context that people are saying love is love, but that's not true. You can't just just because you love something or someone loves you doesn't mean that the relationship is healthy. Once again, that's not what they're referring no. I, to. I ninety percent of it was really good. There's just when I hear carte blanche statements like that that are of a principle that just is not objectively true. It bothers me, but. That was only the first opening few statements that he said. The majority of what he said I thought was very encouraging. And I love that he's about personal development for people. That's not just about learning the language, but it's about public speaking, body language, how to properly address people, how to sit at a table if you're at a place. I mean, what happens if you suddenly find yourself in a position you didn't expect and you're invited to dinner at the White House? Would you be comfortable going to the White House and sitting at the table and know exactly what the proper etiquette is there when you look down at the table and see all the forks and all the spoons and all the glasses? Granted, I wouldn't care. Uh, <laughs> really, you would you would not care one, about how you're perceived. One, how I perceived? No, yeah. absolutely not. Uh, no, I'm not going to stand on the table and hump the air. Yeah, but I, I I have no issue with just being myself and and not looking like an uppity up. What? No, but why is that an uppity? Uh, no, versus you, like because you said like oh I want people to think I I if I use no a, I, if, I if I use a wrong fork I don't give two flying shits it's a fork yeah I don't, if somebody if if somebody thinks less of a person because they don't know how to use a fork I think much less of that person that thinks about of that person interesting because if you think a person's worth is if, do they know which fork to use oh, it's not you're about a fucking the, asshole no it's not about measuring the t- the person's total worth it's about measuring the person's sense of social decorum and looking beyond themselves the reason that social decorum is there is because everybody wants to feel like they're elite over everybody else. No. Nobody in real life ever uses all those fucking forks. And I know what all the forks are for. Well, that's true. But I've been th- a waiter for many, many years. Well, that's true. But it, there's a big difference between having dinner at home and having dinner at the White House. It's about honoring and respecting the place you're in. Right. So the reason why there's dress codes. But, oh, yeah, don't get me started on dress codes. Really? Fuck dress codes. It's all an elitist... That's not what this video is oh, about. All right. <laughs> I have I hate school uniforms. I well, hate, that's I hate that is any time uh, there's a dress code for a place. Well, it, de- I it depends. It. it it to me it depends on everything. Always goes back to why are you doing it? Because they want to be elitist. Every dress code is elitist. Uh, most of them, yes. <laughs> okay. Yes. And also, I don't respect where I am. So, <laughs> like, I, there's no reason I walk into a White House and be like, oh, yeah, I should respect this place. I'm not going to shit on the floor, but I'm not going to treat it like it's some place that I have the utmost respect for because I don't. Okay. It's a fucking house that also wasn't originally white. Little factoid of the day. Uh, in case you didn't know that, it was painted that multiple times. One, because it was burned. As you know. I do know. Uh, but then it originally was not a... George Washington didn't go in there and be like, paint this place white. Please. Yeah, no, he never got to see it finished. No, he didn't. Uh, anyways, uh, let us know what you thought about the video. Let us know what other speeches we can react to from him or others. Yes. Uh, Priyanka. To. I think we've done that one. I want to do it again then. A while ago. It's been a while. But it looks like Big B has one too. Well, let's do him too. Uh, anyways, let us know what other ones you can react to down below. Josh!